Hey guys, it is me, Sora, and welcome back to another video. So the topic of today's video is pain, which is unfortunately something I have been dealing with a lot recently, and how different health issues can sort of mesh together and create a lot of complications within the same person. It sounded a bit weird I think when I come up with the title for this video I'll come up with something that's a bit clearer and all that. Here to start off with, I have autism. Well Alice, it seems we both got autism, haven't we? I was diagnosed with autism when I was 15. That is quite late but that is actually quite common among girls who have autism because it's only being sort of figured out now that autism often presents itself very differently in girls and in boys. This is a generalisation, obviously not every girl or boy who has autism is going to display it in exactly the same way but generally a boy with autism will display sort of very obvious symptoms of very outward about it, you know, maybe causing lots of disruptions in class. But with girls, they will often be more quiet and within themselves. So then the focus would then be on the boy and sort of figuring out what the issue is to stop him from being so disruptive. And then the girl will often sort of any issue she's going through will often go unnoticed because she's not causing any problems for anyone. One thing I know all too well was when I was at school, my teachers always saying Sarah is very quiet, she doesn't talk much and yeah it was always just kind of put down to that because yeah when I was in primary school I did have you know like a small group of friends and stuff I was doing okay but I was just very quiet so it was just put down to the fact that I was kind of shy. But another really common thing happens is that there is some sort of change or a difficult situation that the, the girl with autism is put into and then that's it they will just sort of fall apart and that was the case with me when i started secondary school and everything was different and you know i wasn't around like the same classmates who had been with me for years and sort of knew what i was like then yeah everything was just so different that i just kind of shut down started refusing to go to school and that sort of thing so yeah, then I was finally diagnosed with autism. But what I knew was that I also had a condition called selective mutism. Even before I had been taken in to see a professional, I knew that I had selective mutism. I don't know how I came across it. I think I was just looking up like random articles on Wikipedia. And then I found the article for selective mutism and reading it, it sounded exactly like me. It was exactly what I was experiencing. I just couldn't talk a lot of the time when I was around people that I didn't know and I didn't know why I couldn't talk, like I wasn't doing it on purpose, it just the words wouldn't come out. But having difficulty speaking can also be a symptom of autism. That was what any professional that I went to see after that would always think that the reason why I couldn't talk was because I had autism. Selective mutism is still a very under-researched condition, so even a lot of professionals don't know about it, so they would always think, oh yeah, it's because she has autism. So knowing that it was more than that, and that I was you know, suffering with anxiety, and that was the reason I couldn't talk, I would seek out you know, support for my mental health, but they would always tell me, uh, the reason that you can't speak is probably because you have autism and autism isn't a mental health condition so we're going to send you to this autism specialist place instead. And unsurprisingly when that happened people at these you know, autism specialist groups had never heard of selective mutism and didn't know what to do with me. So yeah it took a really long time for me to actually find you know professional who looked at me as an individual other than just seeing you know my diagnosis and making assumptions I guess. I'm not saying that my autism 
didn't play a part in the developing selective mutism. In fact, on the contrary, what I'm saying is that when someone has any kind of health condition, you kind of have to take a holistic approach to, to look at all of the various things that might be contributing to their problems rather than just focus on one thing. Mental health conditions are really common among people with autism, you know, having social anxiety because, you know, they have all, because of the autism, they may find it sort of like difficult to communicate with other people. And of course that can manifest as developing social anxiety. Uh, recently I have also been suffering with chronic headaches, which are not fun. And because I have this history of anxiety, a lot of people say to me, oh, it's probably because you're anxious so you're getting these headaches. And I don't know if that's true or not, we're still trying to figure out what it is that might be triggering them. I don't think it is that because I actually haven't been that anxious lately. Like if anything is making me anxious, it's the fact that I'm having these headaches. All these different health issues that I have are all sort of like coming together and making things more complex. Like something that very often gets told to people who have mental health issues is, oh, it's all in your head. And that is technically true because, you know, the mental health issues are, you know, an illness inside your brain and the brain is in your head. But yeah, of course, that doesn't make it any less real. And of course, the body is all connected. If one part of your body isn't working right, then it would make sense for it to be affecting other parts of your body as well. Mental health issues can have physical symptoms, and physical health issues can have mental symptoms. Like, one way that these headaches have been kind of, have been really affecting me is because, like, I am a very, I'm a bit of a busy body, I'm the kind of person who's just like really excited about all these things and wants to do new things and learn new skills all the time, but the headaches often get worse if I spend a lot of time looking at a screen or concentrating on something, so that means that I can't always be doing, you know, all these things that I want to do, so that can make me feel, you know, quite down. I wouldn't say I was depressed because I did suffer with depression, I don't think I'm that low at this point, but yeah, I'm very sort of down and lack of motivation, I'm just kind of like wanting to stay in bed all, all the time because, you know, what's the point if I can't really do anything, you know. So yeah, basically what I'm saying is that health issues can't be looked at as an isolated thing, often there are many other factors that contribute to, to a certain health condition. Now just to finish off, When I was younger, I actually contributed to a book. It's called Selective Mutism in Our Own Words uh, by Carl Sutton and Cheryl Forrester. And yeah, this book is basically a collection of uh, stories that are written by people who suffered with selective mutism or maybe related, someone, related to someone who had selective mutism, that kind of thing. Yeah, I wrote a section in this book that's about selective mutism and autism. My mum also did a section and also at the back of the book there is basically an angry letter <laughs> that I wrote to my dad when I was about 12, listing all of the reasons why I didn't want to go to school. Yeah, I'll save those for another, another video, like that last one one especially is quite funny. So yeah, I hope that was interesting to you. Uh, this book you can still buy it on Amazon if you're interested. It is such a good in our own words by Carl Sutton and Cheryl Forrester. Yeah, thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you next time. Bye bye.